In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to create a perfect 45 degree reference line in Tableau. Last week I built this example that shows female literacy rates compared to male literacy rates across the world. And you'll notice that I have this great 45 degree, re this 45 degree reference line. And this is really useful because it allows me to easily compare things that are above or below the line. In this case, I decided to color code the higher female or the higher male. So how do you build something like this in Tableau? I'm going to walk you through a few different examples. So in, our data, in this particular data set, we have uh, the female literacy rate, the male literacy rate, countries, and years. So let's start by just creating a scatter plot. So I'm going to double click on male literacy rate double click on female literacy rate, add the country to detail, and then uh, let's go ahead and let's put, uh, let's filter to a single year. So let's say 2011. Okay, so that's not actually very useful, so let me put the year on detail. Okay, so now we're looking at every single year, and what you need, the trick here is you need to take either one of these pills, it doesn't matter which one, and you need to duplicate it onto the opposite shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take male literacy rate and I'm going to drag it up to the columns. And you'll see I get these, all these dots right here. So you might be tempted to just change this to a line. But the problem with that is if I, if I put, uh, let's say, put country on the path, you'll see I do get a line, but it doesn't extend to the end. So let me go back and switch that to dots. So what I need to do now is take my male literacy rate and make it dual axis, and then I need to synchronize. Okay, so now on my male literacy rate mark, marks card here, I'm going to change this to circles, just to force it to circles. I'm going to make the size very small, change the color to transparent, and turn off my border. So now the lines are there, but you really just can't see them. Actually, let me go to my all marks card and remove measure names from the color shelf. Okay, so going back to my male literacy rate card, I can now right click in the view, choose trend lines, show trend lines, and I want to show the trend line for the male literacy rate. And this is going to compare the males to the males. And you'll see I get a perfect 45 degree angle. Now one thing you need to be aware of is you want to make sure that the axes are the same. So I'm going to right click on my male literacy rate axis, do edit axis, and we're going to fix it from 1 to 105. And then I'm going to right click on my female literacy rate, edit axis, and go from 0 to 105. Sometimes you'll see examples where that doesn't match up just right. So let's go back to our lit female literacy rate. Let's go ahead and change the, uh, again, let's change the mark type to circles. Maybe make them slightly bigger. And then what I've done here is I've created a calculated field called who's higher. And basically all this is doing is just returning a Boolean. Is the female literacy rate higher than the male literacy rate? I'm going to drag that to color. And you can see I've got my females are pink, my males are blue, and then I have a bunch of nulls. I have a bunch of nulls because that's where uh, that are all, those are all these dots here. So I'm going to right click and choose hide. Okay, so there we go. So that's how you could do it. And maybe if you, maybe you want to flip it. So I could even look at it like that if I want the females on the left. And then I would hide the secondary axis. And there you go. Clean up your tooltips and, and you're all done. Very, very simple. So we could call this uh, female versus male literacy rates. Okay, so let's look at another example. So this past week for, or yesterday actually, for Makeover Monday, we looked at this per, uh, corruption perception index. And the way this data looks is we have something called our uh, corruption perception index. And if I drag year out, let me go ahead and convert it to discrete first. And if I do year and country, and then just put corruption index on the shelf, you can see I have all of my uh, countries with each year. Maybe flip this around and put year in the columns. Okay, there we go. So maybe I want to give my user the option to compare any two years. So I could create a calculated field. I'm sorry, I'm going to create a parameter. And we're going to call it pick. Uh, a year, and I'm going to make this a string, and I'm going to populate it from 
corruption index, oops, sorry, I want to make this, I'll just type them in, 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. Hit OK. And let's show that parameter control. And then I'm going to duplicate that control. And I'm going to rename this one to be pick another year. And hit OK. And then show that parameter control. So let's go ahead and set this one to 2015. Now my parameters aren't doing anything yet because I haven't told Tableau what to do. Let me go ahead and drag these all these items off of the view. So now I need to click on Jeremy, do create calculated field, and I want to call it first, uh, first year CPI. And this is just going to be a simple if statement. I'm going to say if pick a year is equal to year, then CPI end. And I've got an error, so I can't compare integers and strings, so I need to actually convert this to an integer first. Okay, there we go. So this is our first year CPI, and then we can duplicate that. And I'll call this my second year CPI. And I'm going to say pick another year. Okay, so now I can double click on my first year CPI double click on my second year CPI and I get a single dot. So from here I want to put country on detail. And there we go. Maybe I want to color code them by region. Or no, let's take, let's take that off. And let's make them circles. So again, what I need to do is I need to just take one of these pills and duplicate it to the other shelf. So I'm going to take second year, drag it to the rows, make it dual axis, Right click and synchronize, go to the all marks card and remove measure names from the color. Go to my second year marks card, make the size tiny, make the color transparent, get rid of the borders, and then right click in the view, trend lines, show trend lines, second year CPI. And now you see, you see up here in the upper corner, it doesn't quite match. So I did synchronize, right? But the problem is our axes are slightly different. So I'm going to double click on my first year CPI on the axis and fix it. I know we can't go above 100, so I'm just going to go from 0 to 100 on both axes. And here I'm going to fix it to be 0 to 100. Hit OK. All right, and it looks like something happened here. Edit axis. So we go from 0 to 100. Hit OK. Okay, and now you see I've got a perfect 45 degree angle. So it's a matter of right clicking on this uh, on the right side and unchecking show header. Go ahead and hide my little indicator. And now I can compare any two years. And isn't that nice and neat how that works? So I could create a calculated field now to color those dots. So I'm going to call it year comparison. And I'm going to say pick a year. I'm sorry, no, I want to say um, first year CPI is greater than second or is less than second year CPI. And what that would mean is if the second year CPI is higher than the first year, that means it's improving. So again, that's going to result in a Boolean. Drag that on my all marks card, or actually on my first year marks card. Drag that to color. And I get a bunch of nulls. I think that's because I have these, so I need to probably wrap this in a zero null so I can compare them and hit OK. All right, and that looks like it broke the view, so uh, let's forget about that for now. So let's delete that, see everybody makes mistakes. But you can easily see which regions are above or below the line. So in other words, um, the ones that are, in this case, the ones that are above the line are actually decreasing. So maybe I should actually flip the axis to, because to me, the ones that are above the line would be the ones that are improving. So here I see Estonia went from 64 to 68. Cyprus went from um, 66 to 63, meaning it's declining. Okay, so this could be our CPI comparison. And then we could maybe do something similar for superstore sales. So let's go ahead and let's do a new worksheet. And this time let's look at sample superstore. 
And in this case, maybe I want to, I'm going to click on Jeremy and create a new calculated field. And I'm going to call this one first year sales. I'm going to say if the year of order date is equal to pick a year, then sales, else null. Okay, and it doesn't like that uh, because it's trying to compare, so I need to wrap this in an integer. Keep forgetting that. I could have just changed my parameters to integers, that would have worked as well. So that gives us our first year sales, and then let's duplicate that and edit, and we'll call this one our second year sales. And we'll say pick another. I'm just reusing the parameters that I had before. So I'm going to double click on second year sales, double click on first year sales, and then maybe I want to allow my, I'm going to create another parameter it's to call pick a dimension. And this is going to allow me to uh, perhaps put in the view, uh, basically allow my user to tell me how many dots I want to draw. So I'm going to make it a string, and let's create a list. So let's say they can pick customer name, or they can pick uh, product name, or they can pick state. Maybe those are the three things we want to allow them to pick. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and let's reveal all three of these. So let's show parameter controls. And then I need to create a calculated field for my pick a dimension. So I'm going to say dimension chosen. And this is just going to be a simple case statement. I'm going to say case pick a dimension when customer name, then customer name. When product name, then product name else state end okay so now I can take this dimension chosen and put that on detail and you'll see I get all of these dots so I want to take one of my axes and duplicate it to the other dual axis right click synchronize okay and then on my on the uh, second mark or actually go to the all marks card and remove measure names from the uh, color Go to the second one and let's go ahead and let's change this to um, circles. Make the size small, the color transparent, uh, no borders, and then I just simply right click, trend line, show trend lines, and I want to do it for my first year. Okay, again it's slightly off. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier to synchronize the axes, so let me hide the indicator because um, you can see uh, as we change the years, the axes could change. So in this case, I'm going to leave it alone, but it does. Uh, you do see where all of these pass exactly on the intersection of 60 and 60, 70 and 70, etc. So it is still a 45 degree angle. It's just uh, it doesn't go directly to this corner. So I'm going to hide that header. And in this case, let's see if we can let's see if we can figure out how to make that color coding work. So uh, let's go ahead and let's change this to say, instead of that, let's say zero. And in our second year sales, let's edit that and let's say zero. Okay, so now we still have our 45 degree angle, but I don't think that's gonna work because now I have my first year, so yeah, that's not gonna work, so we don't wanna do that. Okay, so there is a way to figure that out. I just uh, can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change my second year mark card to a circle. And there we go. So you've got a nice 45 degree angle. So let's call this one our sales comparison. So that's three different ways that you could build a uh, 45 degree angle. It's all the same technique, just with different data sets, just to show you that, um, for example, in our adult literacy, we already had our measures uh, split out between male and female literacy rates. But in our corruption perception index and our superstore sales, we had to actually build the calculations in order to have them for comparison purposes. So hopefully you found that helpful. And if you have any future ideas you'd like to see for any tablet tips, feel free to let me know. Thanks and have a great day.